up guys, PJS here back again. Thanks for watching, you've been following all these videos. We finally made it y'all. It is uh, Easter Sunday, or as I like to call it, Resurrection Sunday. And uh, for those of you new here, uh, like, follow the Facebook page, or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, I'm just thankful that you guys have been following me. Thank you for watching. You know, every single day I've been making a video that coincides with the same day of uh, Jesus during this Holy Week Passion Week and uh, now we've made it today is that Resurrection Sunday so I've been reading a passage or a chapter or a portion of a chapter again with the same day that coincides with the day of Holy Week and Passion Week and today is the finale so here we go we are on the resurrection we are on Easter Sunday and we're gonna go now to scripture and uh, we're gonna celebrate this is a celebration now so I'm gonna read from Matthew chapter 28, all right? And I'm gonna read uh, from verse one all the way to verse 15. This is the NIV 1984 edition. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of them that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And the story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. This is the resurrection. He came back to life. He defeated death and defeated sin. And this is the finale, like I said, this is the climax. He came back from the dead. And it is such a awesome celebration. This is why we celebrate Easter. Not for bunnies or for eggs or for chocolate, but to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, for those of you watching, if some of you here watching, you don't know Jesus, you don't like Jesus, and you don't believe in Jesus, I I'm so thankful that you guys are watching. Seriously, that's humbling. And uh, I wanna let you know, I've been saying this in every video, and I hope to say it more and more and more, but just because you and I disagree, it's all good. I don't hate you. I would love to have a relationship with you and dialogue with you, all right? Please don't follow the bad examples that you often see on the media. And it's funny that I say that because this is social media right now, but um, don't, don't put me in that bucket, all right? I, I would love to have a relationship with you, some coffee with you, and get some dialogue. But if you're here and you don't believe in Christ and you think the church sucks and this is all a bunch of lies, all right? Yo, I just wanna share this, okay? So check, check this angle out, look at this angle, all right? Why is the resurrection of Christ so important? It sounds ridiculous, right? I talked about that in another video. We hear a lot of ridiculous things today. A lot of miracles today so uh, I believe in ridiculous things that can be possible and happen today but why is it so important that he came back to life well you know there's a lot of messiahs back then a lot of guys claiming to be the messiah a lot of guys claiming to be God there's a lot of yahoos and a lot of delusional people Jesus Christ was seen as one of them it's like a lunatic okay so when people say that I want to die I'm gonna forgive you of your sins, right? If you die and you stay dead, you haven't really accomplished anything, right? You just die and that's it. Death doesn't defeat sin, all right? The resurrection proves 
that you actually defeated death. It makes no sense for you to say, yo, I could defeat death and you die, you just die. That's crazy, right? No, 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 if you say I could defeat death, then what are we all waiting for? We're waiting for you to come back to life because you actually did defeat death, right? You actually defeated it. So the resurrection is so important because without it, there'd be no gospel, there'd be no forgiveness of sins, there would be no signal, there'll be no proof that Jesus actually defeated death. You know, on a divine level, on a cosmological level, it's very, very important because the resurrection signifies to all of us that the Father accepted his punishment. He actually accepted it. If Jesus stayed dead, then he would have just died. And that's it. And he wouldn't have resolved anything. But the fact that he came back to life proves that the Father God accepted his punishment as the payment for all of our sins. Therefore, he has come back to life because he defeated the power of sin. He defeated death. That's why he resurrected. See, it's proof that the Father was appeased. The punishment was accepted. Justice has been served. It has been done. Resurrection is not about do. The gospel is not about do. It's about being done. It is finished. So we celebrate. This is a celebration. And for those of you who don't believe in Christ, I know that this sounds ridiculous, but I've been sharing a little bit in all my videos, and I want you just to take the story and, and compare the story to all the major religions out there. Do, do we have a story that's very, very different from them? Do we believe in a God that's very, very different from them? We do, we do. Our gospel is very, very different. We have, we have a humble God. We have a God that looks very, very weak to the world. He's filled with grace, filled with mercy. He doesn't um, make himself angry so that you have to earn your way back into his love and grace. No, it is God himself who works so that you can be accepted into his family. It's not that you have to work to be accepted in his family. What other religion operates like that? What other philosophy operates like that? Even our own world doesn't operate like that. It is God who has done the work for you and I. So again, I hope that there might be a little bit of uncertainty in you so that you can believe in Christ, start a journey of asking questions, and maybe visit a church. Maybe you could visit my church. Maybe you have a dialogue with me. And I would try my best to answer questions. I don't know everything, all right? There's a lot of smarter people out there, a lot more, more smarter than me, scholarly people. But I'll try my best to help uh, answer any questions you have. But Christ is real. The death of Christ is real. The power of the cross is real. The resurrection is real. And it's proof positive that he resurrected. There's been many historical accounts of people who actually saw this guy, Jesus, this Jesus here, come back to life. There are many people who said, I actually saw him come back to life. It is evidence. Now we go back to this theory of like, ah, that could all be a lie. This is how lies form. This is a hoax. Well, here's my last kind of like um, attempt for you to uh, be a little bit more curious about the gospel for those of you who don't believe, all right? But check this out. In this time period, in the first century, all right, it was almost like North Korea, meaning that if you claim to believe in Christ, if you were a follower of Christ, you were kind of going against the regime. You were going against the empire and you risked your life. You kind of put your life on the line. How many people would actually do that? Yeah, we know some crazy people today in this time period right now. They're very, very delusional, very, very crazy. They would kill themselves and they would risk their life. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I wonder how many people would do that in North Korea right now. I wonder how many people would do that when Stalin was in control. I wonder how many people would do that when it was Hitler. How many of them would just kind of go against the regime, risking their life? We did see that at Hitler, right? These guys were trying to go against Hitler, all right? But how easy was it for them? It wasn't easy. They were in, in secret. They were just kind of doing total black ops, all right? But the followers of Christ were not doing black ops. They were loud. They were evangelizing. They went to jail. They came out of jail, went back to jail. Many apostles were martyred. They were actually all martyred except for John. 
these guys were not doing black ops. These guys were publicly evangelizing, sharing the gospel. Something to think about. If it's all a lie, it's all a hoax. Yeah, maybe in secret you could believe, but these guys, they weren't secret. They weren't silent. They were trying to build that church. They're trying to evangelize. They're trying to build the kingdom of God. Yo, to all you pastors out there, to all you leaders out there, I hope that you can continue to use your church as a landing zone for people who don't know Christ. I pray that, uh, that you at the church will think about the first time guest. Think about that visitor, because they're probably scared. They might be coming already hating the church. And that encounter with you can be the difference between them continuing to go to church and kind of giving God a chance and saying, uh, I knew it. These guys are all hypocrites or they're all kind of like unfriendly. I'm never going back again. So please, I beg of you, think about those people who don't know Christ. Think about those people walking through your doors. Everyone has a story. That's what I learned here at my church. It's something that I say all the time. Every person that walks through your church doors, they have a story and some of them have a sad story some of them have a painful story some of them have a confusing story some of them have a very very bad story a false story because they have a false idea of what the church is and just think about yourself you have an opportunity to encounter them to engage them to share the good story the good news the, the story of Christ so for all those of you out there at the church let's keep going there's more work to be done. Let's go do some damage for the kingdom. It's Easter Sunday, it's Resurrection Sunday. Let's go, there's more lives to be saved. And let's do it together. Churches, please build that church family. And it's all about relationships. Marinated, of course, in the gospel, but it's about relationships. So build those relationships.